Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Mark Robinson and I interview Zach Conine, the Nevada State Treasurer, running for re-election here for the whole show on all new Nevada Newsmakers. What kind of a man lies to women? This one. Steve Sisolak is lying to us about abortion, opposed to contraceptives, no exceptions for rape or incest, abortion ban. Joe Lombardo doesn't support any of those things. Sisolak is a desperate man trying to hold on to power. Our schools are unsafe, police are under attack, and families are struggling. What kind of a man covers up his failures with lies? This one. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at Ahern.com. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Mindham with Joey Whitaker. Entertainment here at the Carson Valley Inn is extraordinary. Yeah, super proud of the TJ's Corral, our outdoor venue, about 1,500 seats. We've had first class entertainment out there. We've had Merle Haggard, we've had Chris Young, we've had Lee Bryce a couple times, we've had Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're real proud out there, and it's, and it's just a great time. Watch CarsonValleyInn.com and grab those tickets early. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, along with Mark Robinson of the Reno Gazette Journal, uh, we're pleased to welcome Zach Conine, the Nevada State Treasurer, to the program. Uh, it was supposed to be a debate uh, between the treasurer, uh, current treasurer, and Las Vegas City Councilwoman uh, Michelle Fiore, who is running for the office. Um, unfortunately, she was taken ill several days ago and is unable to attend, and so we wish her well. But in the meantime, we would like to continue on with this interview with you, sir. Happy to be here. Okay, well, it's great to have you, and I'll, I'll start with um, your opponent uh, spoke at the recent Trump rally in Minden, and at it, one of the criticisms she made about you was um, saying that she said you had pulled out strong investment funds uh, even if one out of a hundred companies in the portfolio manufactures guns. And so talk a little bit about that. So what I believe Ms. Fiore is uh, referring to, and I'd ask her if she were here, but what I believe she's referring to is the $89 million that we divested in manufacturers and retailers of assault style weapons. We did that because those investments were risky, not just risky from a company perspective, but also risky from a litigation perspective. Since then, not having those investments has saved the state about $8.2 million. It was a great divestment. We're glad we made it. Okay, so now related to that though, she would say that that was politicizing um, you know, the job of the treasurer and the investment portfolio of the state and that instead of think making decisions for that based on political reasons like gun manufacturing that it should be on you know what is the best investment for return for the state and, and, it, and it is and it turned out to be but it was also a political decision so I guess I, and, and so what would you say to that criticism that you're politicizing the investments of the state well I would say that the most important job of the treasurer as the state's chief investment officer is to invest to get the highest return back for Nevadans and that means avoiding risk those companies were deemed risky by our office. I've been investing for more than 15 years. I have both the experience to do this, and frankly, we've shown the outcomes, highest investment returns in the history of the state, right? And so we made a decision to get out of an investment that was risky. We were right. 
And so if anyone questions that investment or any other investment we've made, I'd simply ask them to look at the outcome and look at the hundreds of millions of dollars in investment returns we've had for Nevada. Let's uh, uh, go to the top of the news, which is you know how crazy the inflation is at this point in time. Uh, everybody driving down the street goes past the gas station and sees the prices and they know about inflation. They go to the grocery store, they see about inflation. How does the current round of inflation um, affect what you do in your office? Well, in our office, we are focused on making sure that Nevadans have as much money in their pockets as possible, right? Part of that is in giving back unclaimed property. We've returned more than $190 million of unclaimed property since I've been treasurer, which is a record for any one-term treasurer. We're coming up on the record for any two-term treasurer. We've done that by making sure that the system is more effective and money gets out more quickly because those are dollars in people's pockets when they need them the most. Our investment team works on making sure we get the highest return for investors, again, the highest return in the history of the state. And when we do that, that means we have more money to pay for things, even if things are more expensive. Okay, but how do you, how do, you do that? Is it a committee? How many people is involved in that committee? Are they all based in your office? Do you have financial advisors? Mm -hmm. Do you deal with Wall Street investment firms? How does that work? Because, you know, for the most part, the treasurer's office plods along and, and nobody pays a whole lot of attention to it until we come to election time. Uh, that's fair. I'd like to say we don't plod. We move methodically through uh, areas of higher return for you and everyone else that pays taxes in the states. But uh, in the Treasury, we have a team of four people internally, plus myself. I'm the first treasurer in the history of the state to be involved in the investment decisions directly. I'm the first treasurer to have a Bloomberg terminal because I am an investor by trade, right? Uh, I believe in that rally. Uh, Ms. Fiore also said that I'd been a political operative for 22 years before I was plucked for this. Uh, 22 years to the day before I became treasurer, I was 15. Uh, I think facts matter a little bit. Um, because before I was treasurer, I used to run hotel properties, started a business that had more than 500 employees under management, paid all of my taxes on time, another contrast between myself and my opponent. And we learned how to invest. And when you invest well, when you have a treasurer that has the experience and the integrity necessary to run that office, the small team of internal people, the larger team of external advisors, the partnerships that we have with groups like Vanguard and Putnam, exceptional investment teams, help us to provide great return for the state. And we didn't talk about one of the biggest ways that we help fight inflation here in Nevada, which is having the state's highest credit rating ever. Because when we have the state's highest credit rating ever, we've had two credit rating upgrades since I've become treasurer, that saves Nevadans hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes because we have to pay less in interest. So even as interest rates rise, the interest rates that Nevada has to pay stay as low as humanly possible because of the work we've done because of the experience of this office, because of the relationships that we have with the rating agencies and the time that we've spent building those relationships. There's okay, a trust there, and uh, that saves Nevadans money. Okay, but, um, I, and, and, and that's all good. I, I, I'm just curious, um, with the interest rates rising um, from a federal level, um, how does that affect what you do? Are you seeing, even with a good credit rating, are you seeing interest rates levels rise? Well, in our world, right, when interest rate rates rise, we make more money on the investment side. Most of what we invest in is fixed income. We're buying bonds, treasuries, agencies, corporate notes, commercial paper, things like that. And so when the interest rates rise at the federal level, we actually see increased interest rates uh, that return to us, right? Well, what kind of percentage right now would you say? Right now, we're north of 3.5% with most of the portfolio. Now, that compares to a couple of years ago when we were in the half a percent range when interest rates at the federal level were almost at zero. And that's hundreds of millions of dollars. Remember, we've got $8 billion under management for the first time in the history of the state. Uh, our bank account crested $8 billion a couple of weeks ago. So when we're able to add another percentage to that, that's $80 million a year, right? So we're able to just continue to grow that uh, exponentially because of the work we're able to do. And for the first time, our investment team is ready for that. We have the right team, the right leadership in place to be able to take advantage of changing interest rates environments. So in our shop, we have a team that is making more money for the state. Again, one of the only state agencies that makes money. And in the other side, on the across the hall, we've got the debt team that borrows money to pay for things when the state issues bonds. We're in a place right now where we haven't issued bonds in a higher interest rate environment, but we are making money in a higher, higher interest rate environment as investors. And so right now, we're hitting the cover off the ball. Okay, so uh, I have a, a question sort of related to that. It's from a, a reader named Molly who wrote in and 
I'm totally going to butcher this because I am not an expert on, on, on this type of financial thing, but it's, it's her understanding that uh, a treasurer needs to be bonded, and she wonders if some of the things that Michelle Fiore faces, the, the tax liens that you've mentioned, um, other investigations, that, that could that keep her from being treasurer? How does that work? Look, I don't want to speculate as to what the background checks on Michelle Fiore are going to turn up. I think we know about a lot of the things that are out there, the hundreds of thousands of dollars in tax liens that have never been paid and never been disclosed as required by Nevada law. The contributions that appear to be from straw donors, the contributions that are clearly over the limit, the ongoing federal investigation, right? You want a treasurer who is experienced, but you also want a treasurer with integrity. And one of the reasons for that is because right at the beginning of the job, you have to have a surety bond. We're the only state employee that I'm aware of who has a bond based on their performance. And that's because in the past, we have had treasurers who have taken money from the state coffers to better themselves, to enrich themselves and their families. And so I think Molly makes a really good point there um, that with someone with the history of taking funds and using them to enrich herself and her family, that could be a problem when it comes to actually getting the surety bond required to be treasurer. Okay, and, and we want to say here that uh, uh, we will certainly follow up with Ms. Fiore for your accusations and, you know, in, in, innocent until proven guilty. For sure, and, and please make, make it very clear, these aren't my accusations, these are the FBI's accusations. I, well, uh, th there are rumors of investigations. The FBI never confirms or denies any investigations. Um, I'm not saying whether they're true or not, I have no idea. Uh, but again, uh, innocent until proven guilty. Um, where does the rainy day fund sit right now and, and how much would you like to increase it by? Because it seems that every time Nevada falls into trouble um, and by no fault of its own, but uh, whether it was 2008 or COVID, um, it always seems that we come up way short on what we actually need. Um, how much would you like to see in the rainy day fund? Well, the rainy day fund doesn't exist in order to protect us from any problem that might be there. It's a mitigation tool, right? And most of what we do in investing is about mitigation. You can't remove risk completely from the environment, but you can say, I'm going to remove a little bit of risk, right? I'm going to choose uh, to elect the treasurer uh, who hasn't had the FBI seal documents, uh, seized documents from their home as opposed to the one who has, right? There's risk mitigation involved in all these decisions. The rainy day fund is just a little bit under the highest level that it's ever been. When we make the transfer in December, which will be the transfer from the overage uh, once we get the audited results back from the current, uh, the year we just finished, the fiscal year we just finished, we'll make that transfer. It'll be at its highest level ever. Which would be around? Well, we don't, we haven't made that transfer yet, and so we've been very clear uh, with the rating agencies that we don't talk about those numbers until they're audited, uh, but we'll be north of $500 million uh, unless something very strange happens, which it won't. And so that incredibly high rainy day fund is a big piece of what makes up our highest ever bond rating, right? Because it shows a commitment to being ready for when bad things happen. And in Nevada, you know, with our cyclical economy, which has become a little bit less cyclical, but still is very cyclical, uh, the rating agencies, the S&P Globals and Moody's and Fitch, constantly go back to, okay, how prepared are you for a rainy day? That's why our office worked with the governor and the legislature to make sure that that rainy day fund got refilled, right? There's always this desire uh, from the legislature and from everybody else to say, well, you know, we've got a rainy day right now, we need to spend that money. But by having that money in reserve, when we do have a problem that's unexpected, like a pandemic, uh, we're able to draw against it and stop the cuts from being that significant. Now, the rainy day fund, I think this is important, the rainy day fund actually allowed us to keep government services where they needed to be. We all had to take, uh, we all took pay cuts, we all made sacrifices, but we were able to then use the federal money that came in, especially the CARES Act, to get it out. We ran PETS, right, the largest small business grant program in the history of the state, the Pandemic Emergency Technical Support Grant. We were able to put out money uh, for housing. We were able to do a lot of things, which was really necessary, especially in Southern Nevada, where the city of Las Vegas took all of their CARES funds, Ms. Fiore supported this, and gave them out as bonuses and payroll to government employees. So we had to actually come in and meet the gap of spending that wasn't there for everyday working Nevadans because the city of Las Vegas made a different choice, right? Okay, and, and so the rainy day fund let us do that because we had, again, 
additional money in the pot. And I'm taking it the majority of the Las Vegas City Council voted in favor of that. They all did, yes. Fiore. Okay. Correct. Mark? Okay. So uh, one of uh, Ms. Fiore's requests at the Trump rally was that they vote Republicans straight down the ticket. And, you know, this is asking people to vote based on party, not experience, qualifications. Um, and, and so what, what that raised in my mind was, well, what happens if someone is unqualified for the treasurer's job? How would someone, how would the typical Nevadan know that? Is, is it a thing where the bureaucracy is so entrenched that things just move along and that, you know, it, it happens as it is? Or, you know, how would I know that the treasurer isn't qualified for the job? Well, I think hopefully you would know that the treasurer isn't qualified by the, for the job by doing the basic level of research that, that we can hope that all voters do. Well, I mean the effect downstream. But so once, two years from now, sure, four years from now. Sure. Um, and so I think it's, it's valuable to go back and look in the past at treasurers uh, who have not been qualified for the job and what happened to the state. The best example, of course, is the first treasurer, even Rhodes, who stole about 16% of the general fund in gold bullion. In today's dollars, 16% of the general fund, including what we manage for college savings, would be about $8 billion, right? So city center. Um, stole that money and then additional taxes, taxes were level, uh, levied on Nevada businesses in order to get us out of the hole. If we have a treasurer who is unqualified, a number of things happen right away. One, we have difficulty with the rating agencies, which can increase our credit rating right away. If what Molly said comes to pass, all of a sudden we worry about breaking debt covenants up and down the line, which could cost the state hundreds of millions of dollars over the next 20 years. We worry about immediately, can people get paid and do we have a treasurer who would not cut a check because they don't believe that the education that's being taught in, say, the Washoe County School District meets whatever their criteria are? Do we not pay for health care expenses because we don't like that women's health care is being covered? Do we not pay for the National Guard because we don't like how they're being deployed, right? We've never had, we've had some criminal treasurers. We've never had a malicious treasurer. We've never had an incompetent treasurer who is also malicious. And so the question, right, how could this affect Nevadans? You know, I just had a conversation with somebody who has a Nevada prepaid tuition contract. Right? That is a promise that the state has made to provide tuition dollars for her daughter when her daughter goes to school. She's right about to do that. The Nevada Prepaid Tuition Trust has been managed by Democrats and Republicans since it was set up by Treasurer Bob Seal, who is one of the people who has endorsed my campaign, a Republican, uh, and I think most people would say a pretty steadfast Republican, uh, but has endorsed us because we're the only candidate in the race who actually knows what the treasurer's job is, and they think that's important. Um, may I ask, um, you know, God forbid you were struck down with some terrible illness and were not able to uh, serve the function of the treasurer's office, or if you suddenly went rogue, or anybody mm -hmm. suddenly went rogue, and what are the, the backups? Is it the governor's office? Is it the legislature? How would that be resolved? Because I can't imagine that somebody would be allowed to serve out a term without there being consequences if they went rogue. You know, I can't speculate as to how the judiciary would get involved, where the lawsuits would get filed to make people do But they uh, would, do, their do work. you not think? Uh, at some point, for sure. But remember, we're talking about payments in the billions of dollars on a monthly basis. It's not that those payments would never get made. It's that if they get delayed by three or four weeks, what does that do to our teacher population in the state? What does that do to the projects that are currently under construction? What does that do to our men and women who are protecting us, Nevada Police Union So one, one person, the treasurer, has that ability. Yes. Which means you also have that ability Correct. if you decided for whatever reason to go rogue. That's right, which is why it's so important to elect leaders that have integrity and competence. I know that not a lot of people pay a lot of attention to the treasurer's race, and I hope that they continue to be able to have the luxury of not paying attention to the treasurer's race in the future because we don't have a scenario where the treasurer destroys the financial stability of the state. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back with more right after this timeout. My job is to help women make the best choices about their reproductive care. Make no mistake, electing Adam Laxall will give Mitch McConnell the power to pass a nationwide abortion ban. The fact that this law would criminalize physicians and nurses for practicing women's health care is unbelievable. A lawyer politician like Adam Laxalt has no role in making medical decisions for my patients. I went into health care to help people, and Adam Laxalt should just let me do my damn job. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. What do you count on? 
You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Mendham with Joey Whitaker. One of the things I love about the Carson Valley Inn here in beautiful downtown Mendham is CB steak. I have eaten here so many times. Tell folks what they can expect when they come here to eat. It's a beautiful room, great service. We have certified Angus beef, seafood, lamb, a great range of appetizers, and wonderful desserts. Jean-Michel's done a great job of selecting some beautiful wines for us. The customers love it, and we've got a great selection of cocktails as well. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. The 10th Annual Nevada Newsmakers Goes to Washington is brought to you by the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC, our community, Pro Group Management, Workers' Comp that works for you, University Medical Center of Southern Nevada, Compassion, Accountability, Integrity, Respect, the Nevada Mining Association, Mining a Better Future for Nevada, and NV Energy. NV Energy proudly serves Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Zach Kona, and he's the Nevada State Treasurer. Michelle Fiore was invited to debate uh, the Treasurer on this program. Unfortunately, she fell ill several days ago and will not be able to be here. Okay, so I am learned a lot from that last answer that you gave and because I, I don't think that I quite understood how a treasurer could go rogue. And so I, I just, I, I will want to dwell on one part that um, you said. So if the treasurer, for whatever reason, disagrees with something that, say, I don't know, the Washoe County School District does, that person can delay payment to all teachers or to that fund? So right now we send out tens of thousands of checks uh, a month, right? A week, frankly. We send out wires all the time. All of those go through an automated process, right? I don't sign every check in the state, thank God, because I would have the worst, world's worst case of carpal tunnel syndrome on the planet, right? But I could require that. I could stop the use of my auto signature and by definition make every check come in front of me. I could sign some quickly, I could sign some slowly. The treasurer, and the controller for that matter, have the ability to gum up the works of government if they choose to. Now, no one's ever done this, but no one's ever been malicious in this job before. All right, let's take another break and we'll be right back. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker, and you've got a lot of convention space and meeting breakout space for people. Tell us about what's available. Well, we can handle a group up to about 250 uh, and anywhere as small as 10 or 15. So it really depends on what you're looking for, what the customer's looking for. We're open to anything. It's a beautiful drive, and if you live in South Reno, it's probably about 30, 35 minutes, so it's real easy to get to. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. 
Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Zach Conine. He is the Nevada State Treasurer. This was initially supposed to be a debate between he and Michelle Fiore, the Las Vegas City Councilwoman who is running for treasurer. She unfortunately was taken ill several days ago, and we will try to give her an opportunity to respond to some of the comments that you have made. Looks like we have a billion dollars in additional revenue come into the state uh, over this biennium, is that correct? Yes. As treasurer, what would you like to see done with a billion additional dollars? Well, I'll tell you what we're already doing with it, which is investing it and creating a return for Nevadans. So that money is in the bank, and so we've been able to invest and create tens of millions of dollars of additional return on that money already. We're always happy when the bank account's as big as possible. But I think, you know, when you look at how the legislature and the governor are going to use those dollars in the next legislative session, you look at sort of the, the base functionality of the Treasury, right? What is investing? And it's taking a little bit of something off the table now to create more in the future. It's what we tried to do with the federal money uh, to make sure that we were replacing systems that needed to be replaced to make sure that we were building affordable housing, investing in child care and broadband and mental health services and everything else that we know that the state so dramatically needs. The work of the Treasury is investing. And that's why it's so important. It's so important to have someone with the experience and the integrity to make sure that we've got $8 billion in the bank one day, we still have $8 billion in the bank the next day. And that's where we have to leave it. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the campaign trail. We appreciate you being here. And that's where we have to leave it. And we'll be right back. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday. Trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Hi, I'm Renee Summer, our digital news anchor here at 7 at 7. Watch our streaming nonstop newscast immediately with your mobile phone. 7 at 7 is the new way for you to get every bit of local news you need in just seven minutes. Breaking news, local neighborhood news, weather and sports are just a click away. Reporters bring you all of what's happening in the valley from Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube and more get every bit of local news you need from the RJ and LVRJ.com. The 10th annual Nevada Newsmakers Goes to Washington is brought to you by the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County, your RTC, our community, Pro Group Management, Workers' Comp that works for you, University Medical Center of Southern Nevada, Compassion, Accountability, Integrity, Respect, the Nevada Mining Association, Mining a better future for Nevada and NV Energy. NV Energy proudly serves Nevada, providing electricity to 2.4 million electric customers. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. See you on the next show.